Hey everyone, it's Lisa, and today we're going to talk about how I got into med school in Ireland part two. So for those of you who are coming over from part one, thank you for staying with me. I really appreciate it. I know that video was kind of rough and I'm actually re-recording this part of the video because it was just not, not great. Uh, who knew that I would find recording YouTube videos harder than saving lives because I sure didn't see that one coming. So thanks for staying with me. Hopefully this one will be a little bit better and I'll improve as we go forward. As you can see, I'm in a hotel room right now because I'm on an away placement outside of my normal city. So I get put up in a hotel for the weeks that I'm here. And I'm sure you can also see my mask knee, unfortunately. Um, thanks COVID, yet another thing you've ruined for me. But I don't have makeup right now with me. So we're just gonna have to make it work, okay? Let's get into it now. We're gonna start with the MCAT, which is the one thing that I missed in the last video that is something you need to do before starting your application. So the MCAT stands for the Medical College Admissions Test, and it is a test that everybody sits before they apply to med school. So I'm gonna put the titles of the sections right over here because they're quite long for no really good reason. Um, so we have bio and biochemistry, physics and chemistry, psychology and sociology, and then critical reasoning. So those are the four sections. Each one is 90 to 95 minutes. The whole sitting is about seven, seven and a half hours, including your breaks. And I always finish early, so I vaguely remember finishing this closer to the six hour mark, but it can take up to seven and a half hours or even eight probably if you take longer breaks. So what you'll find from now on is that every single exam that is given in medicine is scored on a really strange scale. No idea why, I don't know who's doing this, but we really need to ask him to stop because it's not intuitive, it makes no sense to any of us. The MCAT is scored from a 472 to a 528. Your midpoint is 500 and you have a 28 point spread on either side. Yeah, that's smart, right? Like makes total sense. Each section is scored from a 118 to a 132. And then those scores are summed and it gives you something near and around 500. The average score is around a 505 to a 506 of people applying to med school. Depending on the year, it'll fluctuate a little bit. But then those who are accepted average around a 511. So something to keep in mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my score report right here so that way you guys can look at what you will get when you finish the MCAT. Each section is scored individually and then they give you your total at the bottom. So you can see there, I got a 507, and then there's like a confidence interval next to it. So anywhere from a 505 to a 509 would be my score, really. Um, but it's a small window, so it's a pretty confident score. My total score is in the 70th percentile, which is great, I'm very happy with that. Unfortunately, when you look at my biology, <laughs> I'm in the 39th percentile, which is quite low, uh, especially given my other percentiles. So unfortunately, that just didn't play to my advantage when applying. And I think having a strong biology foundation is something everybody should consider before they start applying to med school. So the MCAT released a new version of the test in 2015, which I believe is the only update in the recent past. And basically they just made it heavier in biochemistry. So I was lucky enough to be one of the first people to take that exam, which meant we didn't have any real score averages, any uh, way of telling validity of practice tests. It was a stressful time for all of us. Regardless, I ended up studying independently, which is what I do for most of my exams, and managed to do pretty well. You saw my score report there. I do have friends who took a Kaplan course and paid probably a couple thousand dollars for it between the books and the actual course, and most of them seem to think it was really helpful. So. Definitely something to consider if you're one of those people that likes a lot of instruction, then a, a course might be worthwhile. Whereas if you're someone who's highly motivated to work on your own, then studying by yourself might be okay. So that's enough about the MCAT. Now, going on to the application cycle, finally. So the application includes a lot of different things. Your MCAT scores, but also your GPA. And the interesting thing about medical school is they make you recalculate your GPA into a science GPA. So they'll take your cumulative as well as your science GPA. And they have a form that basically you fill out that helps you do this. I'm not sure if I got that from the AAMC or if that was from my school, but basically your science GPA is all of your science courses recalculated. So the average science GPA is actually 3.49 for applicants 
and the average total GPA is a 3.6 for applicants. So these are 2019-2020 numbers. I'm sure the 2021 cycle is going to be a little different just because of COVID. Everything has been a little different, um, but those are the applicant numbers there. As far as people who got accepted, you're looking at a 3.66 science GPA and a 3.73 total GPA. So I know there's a lot of numbers here. So what I've done is I've linked this chart down below. It's from the AAMC and it compares the people who applied to the people who actually got accepted. So it's a nice way to see where you fall in the pack. Now, mind you, this is an average GPA. That means there are plenty of people who scored above it, but also people who scored below it. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the numbers. Numbers are really helpful, but they can also be misleading. So be a little nitpicky when you're looking at them. So you have your MCAT score, you have your GPA, and now you need letters of recommendation for your application. So your letters of recommendation can be from your college professors, which is what most people do, as well as a clinical supervisor. Now, mind you, we're not doing real clinical work before medical school for the most part. I think the majority of people are doing shadowing, observership, volunteering, things like that. The person who oversees you in that position would be your clinical letter. Makes sense. So I have one clinical letter from the doctor I shadowed, as well as four science lectures, two of which were from hard sciences and two were from kinesiology, which was my major. So in total, I had five letters of recommendation. And what I had to do was find five and submit them to a committee. So there's something called a Health Professions Advisory Committee. And this is a committee at most colleges in the States that will take your letters of recommendation and write you a big letter of recommendation. They would basically combine them all into one big letter and submit it to med schools for you. And it is a pain in everyone's behind, let me tell you. So I got all of these letters, then had to go to several interviews for this committee, and then they would write me a letter. The trouble is that no one on the committee had been to med school, or at least it wasn't obvious, like unless somebody's hiding their credentials there. So they're making this judgment based on your academics and these other letters and maybe spending 10 minutes with you so I don't particularly agree with this a committee letter thing, but it is something that most schools ask for. If your college or university doesn't have an HVAC committee, then you don't need to submit a committee letter. You just have to write in there. I believe there's a little spot that says my college does not have an HVAC committee. If they do, then you have to get a committee letter, which was where I was. So now you have your MCAT, your GPA is calculated, you've got your HPAC letter, and now all you need to do is pick your schools. So how do you pick schools? Okay, there's a lot of different ways. First thing I would do is make sure you meet the requirements. We either have one year of biology, one year of English, and two years of chemistry, plus or minus a million different things. They could want you to have different coursework, very specific courses done, certain lab work, certain volunteering, whatever it is. So you need to go through and check the requirements. The other thing is um, to be aware of some schools do not accept community college credit or maybe advanced placement credit from high school, which would have been an issue for me. I had both of those on my application, so be aware of that. So using all of this, you can look at location, you can look at the type of program it is, whether it's traditional classroom-based learning or if it's problem-based learning. So those are two different types of medical schools and they're run a little differently. So it would be important for you to kind of look at their curriculum and how things are structured and then pick based on, on what you think you'll like. So you have all of these things put together, you know which schools you want to apply to, and now you need a personal statement. Now, I'm sure some of you might be thinking, why didn't I put this earlier? Well, I actually think depending on where you apply to, you might want to change your personal statement. So definitely have an idea of what kind of program you're looking for, urban versus rural, uh, big city versus small city, northeast versus southwest, very different places. So you might want to write a personal statement that's somewhat tailored to what kind of medicine you want to practice or what kind of school you're looking for. But basically you need a personal statement. Um, I personally think personal statements are somewhat perfunctory. I think you need to have something that's fairly good, but you don't need to have something that's super outstanding. For the most part, it seems like personal statements are something that is a tick box kind of a thing. If you have some amazing, wonderful story about why you want to do medicine, you save someone's life once upon a time, you know, something really outstanding, then it might really help you. I think most of us are pretty average about what we say in our personal statements. They're all kind of similar. You really just need to do it. 
that's the hardest part, I think, is writing about ourselves can be very difficult. So have some help, have people edit it for you. Just get that thing out of the way. Right, so that's the whole application. So for medical school in the United States, it is a common application. I'm pretty sure it's like the American Medical College admission system or service. It's called AMCAS. Um, and you're gonna apply to all of them through this one system. So AMCAS admission is the first week in June every year. And then after that, you'll get your secondary applications, which are all essays that you'll need to fill out. Every single college for the most part does a secondary application. So keep that in mind with the number of places that you're applying to and which ones to prioritize. The sooner you get things back to them, the sooner they'll decide on your application to invite you for an interview. Interview season is from around September through January. January would be a little late, but I do know people who had them in January. And then after that, acceptances will be in the spring. As far as interviews go, I'm actually not a good person to comment on this. I know that there are different structures of interviews in the US. They might have a multiple mini interview system. They might have just a single interview. Now with COVID, a lot of things are gonna be virtual, so I'm not even sure how that's gonna change. However, I didn't go on any interviews in the United States. So I'm not really a good resource for that. But what I will do is tell you about Ireland. So the application to Ireland is slightly different from the one for the States. Number one being it's a paper application, which I don't think anybody in our age range has ever done. I've never submitted a paper application until I had to do this for Ireland. But basically it's through a company called Atlantic Bridge and you can apply to all of the Irish programs through Atlantic Bridge. You print out the application, you fill it in, you attach your personal statement, you put it in an envelope and you mail it to California and then they take care of it from there. It's a charge of about $300 or at least it was a couple years ago for all of the schools flat fee. It was just the 300 for 350 for all of them. So the other thing you need to understand is that medicine in Europe and Ireland is a little bit different. Typically it's a five or six year program straight out of high school. Nowadays they've started doing graduate entry programs which are modeled on the US system. So it's anybody with a degree can go into the graduate entry program and it is four years long. Now there are four graduate entry programs in Ireland and I applied to all of them and didn't apply to any of the ones that were five or six years. I didn't really think that spending five or six years in college was something I was interested in, but if you are interested in that, then there's definitely more information on AtlanticBridge.com. So the timeline for Ireland is a little bit different from the US. So the US, as I said, submits in the beginning of June, whereas Ireland, it's not due till the end of the summer, around August or September. Then they interview later. The interview will be in January, February, or March, um, depending on the year. All of ours were in January and February because we got acceptances in March. So we actually got it pretty quickly. And then we didn't start till the following September. So my interview for Ireland was very different from an interview in the States. I had to go to New York to do the interview. They had three locations in the US and Canada, Toronto, New York, and California. So I went to the New York interview and it was in a hotel. So I had to go to the conference room area of the hotel and I had to wait in a waiting room. And I kid you not, the guy who was there to like watch us or like tell us when it was our turn was sitting there watching a rugby match on his phone and he was super relaxed. And I remember him saying to us, oh, don't worry about it girls. If you've made it this far, then they're, they're really just looking at your personality. Don't worry, It'd be the easiest interview you've ever done. So that's my terrible Irish accent. But basically it was really a personality interview. I remember the questions being, more about my experiences, so why I wanted to do medicine, why I wanted to come to Ireland. If I could go back and redo the MCAT, what would I do differently? And I had two interviewers, but it was an individual interview. The interview might have lasted 15 minutes. It was quite short. And then we were allowed to leave after that. So it was a very relaxed interview. I think one of the easiest ones I've ever been on. And I felt very confident leaving it. So then after that, we were told that we wouldn't get the acceptance till probably the beginning of April, end of March. It ended up coming March 6th in very early in the morning because of the time difference. So I think it's a good backup plan given that the timeline is shifted a little bit. So you have enough time to focus on the US schools before you tackle the Irish ones. So that's it. That's how I got accepted to medical school in Ireland. The whole process from start to finish 
and all of the mess that's in the middle. So I know that's a lot. There's a lot of different pieces when it comes to applying to the US or Ireland, but hopefully that gives you a little more information about the process. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. If you're going through the process yourself, I'd love to hear about your experience. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.